What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video. We are back with another fun little video as today we have a what if and that what if is for the Phoenix Suns. So as we all know in the 2018 NBA draft the Phoenix Suns had the number one overall pick which they selected DeAndre Ayton which everyone thought was the right pick at the time but when we really look back at it was it the right pick? So I think it's pretty clearly obvious that Luka Doncic was the best player in this draft so what if the Phoenix Suns would have taken the best player in the 2018 NBA draft. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like in this one and subscribe if you are new to this channel. As always, greatly appreciated. NBA 2K24 is literally right around the corner. And of course, we're on the road to 40,000 subs. I hope you guys had a fantastic weekend on top of that. But let's go ahead and take a look at what the Suns would have looked like. So they would have had Luka Doncic with Devin Booker. Obviously, as we all know, these two guys now don't really like each other too much. It seems like there's a little bit of a rivalry there, but you got a young Devin Booker. Oh, uh, yeah, TJ Warren. Now, this roster may not be exactly like 100% accurate, but it looks pretty decent, so we're going to roll with it. Uh, so let's go ahead and move Luka Doncic to the point guard, though, to start things off. That way, we're going to have Luka and Devin Booker play together in the backcourt, and then this is what the starting five is going to look like going into year number one. So, yeah, Luka Doncic, Devin Booker, Josh Jackson. Man, I don't even think he's in the league anymore, if I'm not mistaken. D TJ Warren, uh, Rashawn Holmes, Jamal Crawford, uh, D'Anthony Mellon, Kelly Oubre, Tyler Johnson and Mikel Bridges. So obviously the rest of the roster is just kind of filled out with you know, some filler players. Uh, but other than that, we're going to go ahead and just simulate year number one. And I kind of just want to see what Devin Booker and Luka Doncic could have done together. That is kind of the main premises of this video. Obviously back then this Phoenix Suns team wasn't very good. They didn't really get it figured out until the bubble hit. And then of course that offseason they trade for Chris Paul. And then we all know what happened from there. And they've been a pretty competent organization from there. But before that it was always kind of a mess. We're going to go ahead and simulate this first season. We're going to see how things go. Obviously, uh, we don't want to run a defensive system. And our head coach is Mason Yee. Honestly, I can't even remember who the head coach was for the Phoenix Suns at the time. I want to say it was Igor Kokoskov, but I could be totally wrong. I cannot remember because they just went through like so many head coaches, I believe. But regardless, I will go ahead and simulate to the end of this season. We're going to see how Luka and Devin Booker do in year number one. And then obviously, we'll rebuild the team from there. At the end of year number one, James Harden in a Rockets jersey wins MVP. Bobby Stewart is a rookie of the year, whoever that is. Dirk Nowitzki, sixth man on the Mavericks, Rudy Gobert, defensive player. D'Angelo Russell, most approved. And Steve Kerr, 66 and 6 as they win coach of the year. Not too surprising by that. I believe this is when they had DeMarcus Cousins, Kevin Durant. So obviously, that's not really too shocking to see. Uh, Harden on the Rockets makes NBA first team. Russell Westbrook in the Thunder, LeBron and Lakers. Rent on the Warriors and Nuggets uh, have Nikola Jokic. Chris Paul makes it. You got Bradley Beal, Kawhi on the Raptors, Giannis, and Andre Drummond on the Pistons. Man, that's crazy to see. Donovan Mitchell, Stephen Curry, Blake Griffin, Paul George, Marcus Cousins. Here's all the all defense first team, all defense second team. And then they didn't really have, you know, like Luka and those guys registered as rookies. But I'm sure if they were, they would have made the all rookie teams. But we did not make the playoffs, unfortunately. If we take a look at the player stats, uh, we had uh, 22 from Devin Booker, 20 from Luka Doncic with seven and a half assists. Uh, 15 from TJ Warren, 12 from Jamal Crawford, 10 and a half from Josh Jackson, 10 and then eight. And then Mikel Bridges was kind of nothing too crazy. He's already got his extension. Like I said, this obviously this uh, roster isn't exactly accurate. It's just kind of the reality of the situation. It's hard to find good rosters, but whatever. I want Mikel Bridges locked up long term anyway. It doesn't really bother me too much, but obviously he would rather he would be on his rookie contract rather than and then i think booker's also on his contract so whatever it doesn't matter so let's go ahead and see who goes on to win the championship i imagine it'll be the Warriors with durant and marcus cousins obviously yeah the Warriors make it pretty easily they do face the celtics though a uh, healthy celtics team with gordon hayward and Kyrie, but they do not win the championship the warriors do uh dirk is retiring Taz challenge retiring pal gasol tony parker joe johnson udonis haslam dwayne wade Richard Jefferson, David West, Jamal Crawford. So you got a, quite a bit of retirements there. Let's go straight to the lottery, though, because obviously with us being as bad as we were, uh, having a high lottery pick would be really important. You know, who I would love to add to this team right now would be Evan Mobley. We need a defense. Uh, and I don't know if we'll get to that point because obviously we're only projected the seventh pick. But Evan Mobley would be amazing. But we'll see what kind of luck we get here as we are going to get the third overall pick. So we jumped up into the top three. Now, I don't know that if that means Evan Mobley will fall to us or not. I'm hoping he does. That's who I want. Or mate, wait, am I thinking of the wrong draft? I think I'm thinking of the wrong draft. I think that's next year's draft or the year after that. I'm actually tripping balls right now. What am I even talking about? I believe this is the draft of Zion. What am Bro, ignore everything I was just saying. I don't know what on earth I was talking about. I'm talking about Evan Mobley. We're not even in his year yet. Wow, I feel really dumb. But regardless, John Morant, Garland, Zion Williamson, RJ. We really can't go wrong 
uh hopefully zion and rj are still, i'm kind of hoping zion falls to me obviously uh but yeah i don't really need another guard i guess theoretically i could move luca but i don't know if i want to do that so we'll just kind of see how it goes uh mason yeast our head coach i mean i'll probably fire him he probably is not very good bro i cannot believe i was talking about evan mobley coming to the team what am i what am i I, I don't know regardless i'm gonna sign will hardy to be my head coach we'll bring him in to be our head coach we just need someone who's real i'll sign otis newman and i'll fill the rest of this out and i will see you guys on draft night with what falls to us at pick three all right so let's go ahead and see how this draft is gonna go so number one is gonna go john Morant to the atlanta hawks all right number two is gonna go rj barrett so that means zion williamson falls into our lap at pick number three so instead of zion going number one in this draft he goes number three i don't know why but hey zion added to this team with luca and devin booker i'm not gonna complain we still have a second round pick as well. And I see Brandon Clark and uh, he's listed as small forward. Interesting. Oh, we also have Jordan Poole as well. I'd rather have the big though, even though Jordan Poole is probably better. I'm going to go Brandon Clark. So I'm going to go Brandon Clark here in the second round. And uh, yeah, Zion's in 81. I think we got the best player in this draft, obviously, as long as he can stay healthy. That's the main thing. And then uh, how did Brandon Clark look and how did Jordan Poole look compared to him? So uh brandon clark was 73 jordan pool is a 71 so technically we took the better player whatever so brandon clark and then zion we're going to bring them both in player options we got nothing going on there qualifying offers uh, obviously all these guys are just auto generator or not even real so we're not gonna worry about them too much but for free agency uh we could go out there and sign kevin durant we could bring him early on to the phoenix suns but i'm not gonna do anything like that josh jackson i don't know what i don't know what he's thinking or what kind of audacity he has but he's asking for 33 million and the million there's like literally a million worlds out there potentially and there's not a single world where he would get that so there's no no way i'm giving josh jackson that much money uh but luca devin booker we have mikhail bridges at the three which obviously i would trust mikhail bridges developing oh we literally have no one under contract right now so i'm gonna move clark to the center because obviously i wanted to play like a backup five role but yeah so technically we kind of have a starting five if we wanted to go with this. I don't know if I really want Brandon Clark to be my starting center, but I'm okay with obviously like Mikel being my starting small forward, Zion being the starting four. And then ideally, you'd like to get maybe a center who can shoot. I mean, Anthony Davis is out here. We could just go for AD to Marcus Cousins, who just came off a year averaging 22 and 10. So instead of Cousins coming back and not looking like his old self, he actually comes back and plays pretty well. But I'd like to keep the youth movement kind of on the team. So like Andre Drummond, who could sign him to 40 million, Hassan Whiteside. Steven Adams. Let's see what else, what other centers we have. So we have Al Horford out here as well. Uh, we have Drummond, Cousins. And Cousins would be my best bet. He's already 28. AD obviously would be amazing as well. Uh, Anthony Davis would probably be my best bet at 26 years old. Be pretty nice to have him. Or even like a Miles Turner at 23. So you know what? We're going to go for Miles Turner. We're not going to go all in on Anthony Davis. I think that'd be pretty easy. So I'm going to go Miles Turner to be my starting center for the squad. I think he'd fit pretty perfectly. And then we kind of just need to sign some bench guys also uh maybe a small well i mean i could i could trust mikhail bridges i think so we're gonna sign miles turner to be our starting center 100 that's a done deal there so i'm glad i'm happy with that i also want to bring back melton and tj warren i think so i'm gonna go ahead and resign d'anthony melton and uh tj warren i don't think i'll resign uh well rashawn holmes i wouldn't mind bringing him back either but we're gonna sign d'anthony melton and tj warren back and then Josh Jackson, as I said, he can go kick rocks for asking for that much money. That is never happening in a million years. But uh, I saw Ed Davis. That's a name I haven't seen. It. Actually, we just never mind. What am I talking about? I just drafted one of the throwback videos. So um, TJ McConnell, DJ Augustine, Wayne Ellington, you got Kyle Corver. What else do we need? So we have a point guard. We have Dathan Melton now. We have Mikel Bridges, TJ Warren, Zion, and we have Miles Turner and Brandon Clark. So we still need quite a bit of stuff. So we could pretty much go down the list. So like Tim Frazier. That's backup point guard or Hall Neto. I mean, we literally just need anybody. So I'm going to go ahead and sign both of them. And then uh, Reggie Bullock. I mean, I think uh, technically we have two small forwards right now, like Wayne Ellington. Seth Curry. I wouldn't mind Seth Curry. So we're going to sign Tim Frazier. We're going to sign Hall Neto and then Seth Curry. Yeah, so Seth Curry's going to come to the team as well. And then it's starting to get, you know, get it kind of rough out here. So Andrew Bogut, I'll give him a minimum offer at 35 years old to be a mentor here or whatever, or he plays minutes. We'll see. CJ Miles nice little shooter at 32 we'll go ahead and bring him in as well i think that might be it jared dudley once upon a time i believe played for the phoenix suns i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure he did uh but i'm feeling pretty good about that obviously it's all gonna matter about development we kind of have a pretty good young youth movement going here and i feel pretty confident about the young guys we have now how much do they go up in overall is the question so yeah luke is already up to an 84 devin booker is up to a 91 Miles Turner is up. Mikel Bridges is already up 77. So yeah, the team is developing nicely, which is what we wanted. Bo gets going down, which, you know, obviously kind of figured was going to happen. Melton's up. Warren is up. So yeah, everyone's developing, which is a great sign 
as maybe we could be a playoff team as soon as next year or a play-in team. I mean, that's definitely a possibility. So I think we're on a good track right now. I'm going to go ahead and load a 2020 draft class, I believe, and I will see you guys uh, in the rotation. The rotation going into next season looking something like this. We have Luka Doncic, Devin Booker, TJ Warren, Zion Williamson, Miles Turner, DeAnthony Melton, Mikel Bridges, CJ Miles, and Seth Curry. And then you also have Clark Bogut and some other guys off the bench if we need them for injury. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Now, do we make the plan or the playoffs this year? I'm not sure. Power King Landers at 17th. I think eventually we do make it. Like, it's only a matter of time before Luka's up to a whatever overall. Then Miles Turner is still developing. Warren also becomes a trade chip, in my opinion, as long as Mikel Bridges keeps developing behind him. Because, hey, if Mikel becomes like an 81, 3 and D uh, wing like he does in real life, then obviously TJ Warren becomes a little bit more expendable. So that could definitely be an idea later on. But I will go ahead and see you guys at the end of year number two. If I do stop at the trade deadline and make a big trade, I will show you. But we'll just kind of see how the record or, you know, how the simulation is going for us. So at the end of year number two, James Harden is your back-to-back -back MVP in a Rockets jersey. I mean, I'm not too, too surprised by that. Obviously, James Harden was an absolute stud when he was on the Rockets. Zion is a rookie of the year. Yeah, he was an absolute stud in year one. So 24 points, eight rebounds, not too shocking. Sabonis, six minute on the Pelicans. Quiet defensive player still in the Toronto Raptors. Uniform, bam, most proved in Miami. And then Brett Brown, coach of the year for the Philadelphia 76ers. Jameson is your executive. So Harden, Russell Westbrook, LeBron, Giannis Jokic for all NBA first team. Kevin Durant went to the 76ers, so that would have been pretty nice uh, for Joel Embiid. And then I assume they still have Ben Simmons. Kawhi Leonard is out one or two weeks. Uh, but Ben Simmons still in Philly. Luka Doncic makes an all NBA third team in his second year, so that's not too shocking. Uh, but yeah, all rookie first team, Zion. So love to see it. But we are already the second seed in the West. We're already pretty damn good. We actually won 60 games. So yeah, we went from... Being the third overall pick to winning 60 games. Obviously, it helps when you add Zion next to Luka and Devin Booker. You can expect things like that. Uh, TJ Warren was out for most of the season. As you can see, he only played 36 games. But he's healthy for the playoffs. So if he shows out a little bit, Mikel Bridges is still on the trajectory. We still think he's going to be. I think TJ Warren becomes, like I said, a lot more expendable. So that might be a guy we could trade in the offseason. If we don't win a championship here, it's still possible we just get it done right now. But we still could keep going, obviously. So... Minnesota in round one, they have Goran Dragic, Etuan Moore, Wiggins, Estelaire, Covington, Cat, Daro Sars, Tyus Jones, Cameron Johnson, George Snang, Daniel House, and Derek White. So, somebody come around against the Timberwolves, and we are going to go to seven with them. Does anybody get hurt? Because I had to turn off the injury props because there were just too many injuries happening. Uh, we're going to a game seven. No injuries right now. I don't know if there's any for them. I didn't check. But game seven against Minnesota, it is a back and forth game, and it may be... Wow, this is close. I mean, they don't even have Anthony Edwards. This is close. But we beat them by four. So 38 and 18. I don't know who on earth was absolutely just doing it for the Tim Wolves. But I assume Cat was him. Yeah, so he averaged 20 in the playoffs. So Cat was really good. And Wiggins averaged 18. And then Goran Dragic was really good for them as well. Averaged 23. So shout out to Dragic. But we get the Rockets. And of course, this is uh, the Chris Paul and James Harden Rockets. And they still have Capella. So they're not the Maury Ball Rockets just yet. But their bench is pretty bad. Not going to lie. So maybe that plays in our favor. Not like our bench is that great either, but at least we have a little something, something. But somebody come around against them. James Harden, force, uh, James Harden, Chris Paul versus us, and we are going to go down three to one. Uh, Miles Turner gets hurt, so that probably doesn't help, of course. But I think if we don't want to, yeah, Turner's out for the season. So I assume we lose, unless if we come back without Miles Turner and we lose in five. So we get eliminated by the Rockets, and they lose to the Warriors. Kevin Durant with the 76ers. What are the 76ers look like? Ben Simmons, Reddick, Kevin Durant, Aldridge. Wow. Uh, Joel Embiid. Yeah, pretty solid squad in Philly there. The Mudding playoffs, and the 76ers going to win the championship. So Ben Simmons wins finals MVP. 76ers seeing that 76ers fans seeing that like nah that would have never happened pacers are going to land the number one overall pick so they have the right to draft anthony edwards or they could draft tyrese halliburton and not have to draft or trade for him obviously that's also an idea but i think i want to try to make a big trade this offseason i don't know if i want to upgrade the small i think the center spot is what i want to upgrade although i do like miles turner and he's kind of the perfect fit so maybe we don't have to necessarily maybe it's a small fort i don't know one of those two positions because obviously we like Zion, right? We have we have Luca. We yeah, we're good at the guard spots and we're good at one of our forward spots. So it's either getting an upgrade at the center or the forward spot. So if we look at some of the forwards that we can go for, like Tatum's a free agent, Kawhi. I mean, we could try to trade for Giannis, but it'd be pretty insane. Um, but I think Miles Turner feels like the perfect center to me. So maybe we don't have to force anything. I don't know. Maybe we could just let guys develop. We could also go after Jaron Jackson, which also could be pretty nice. Um, that may not be a terrible idea. I think he came from the same draft class as uh, DeAndre Ayton, right? Dude, I don't I'm, I'm For some reason, 
I'm confusing these draft classes today. I don't know why. I was thinking Mobley was next up, and I'm just I just feel like an idiot. But regardless, I'm just tripping. That's what it is, man. You can you can see by the shirt. I'm just kidding. It says marinara. It doesn't actually say the other thing. Regardless, we're gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna make a trade, man. We're gonna try to make a trade. I'm gonna try to trade for Mr. Marcus Smart from the Boston Celtics. Getting him off the bench, I think, would be pretty awesome. So I'm gonna try to trade TJ Warren for Marcus Smart and see what they say. They agree. So Marcus Smart, pretty easy to get for some reason. Obviously, he was traded in real life, but that gives us Melton and Marcus Smart as backup guards. So Melton would go up, and so no, Smart actually goes down. So we're gonna move Melton to the point guard spot. So now we have two really good backup guards for Booker and Luca, which is great. And then that frees up minutes for Mikel Bridges to be the starting three, which I believe in him going forward, obviously. And then the main thing is trying to hit on these draft picks or not or on a 27th pick and then signing some good free agents. So I see Beef Stew. I saw him for a second. CJ Ellaby, man, don't ever put me in a room with CJ Ellaby, man. I cannot take him serious. All right. RJ Hampton is here. I want Isaiah Stewart. I don't know where he went, though. I may have passed him. I'm not sure. But that's who I kind of want here. So we're going to go ahead and look for him. So Isaiah Stewart. He is going to be, did I pass him again? I might have, and he is going to be right there. We're going to take Isaiah Stewart here. So that'll be our pick. I don't know if he'll be any good right away, but uh, he's 73 overall, so maybe he becomes good. Lendy Waters, welcome as well. Luca and Clark will accept. Qualifying offers, nothing is going on here. And then free agency. As I said, we need to try to hit on some of our, uh, you know, use some of our mid-levels to get some good free agents. So we have good backup guards, especially with Seth Curry still in town. I think we need a good backup five, although we could maybe depend on clark developing that could be maybe something we bank on we'll see but you could get like larry nance who i do like we also have trey lau so larry nance actually some versatility whether he wants to play the four or the five so you know what we're going to start this off season with signing larry nance i like that first edition and then after that it gets kind of rough so larry nance was our big addition to the team chandler parsons is here uh you got we can bring back cj miles again i guess i'll do that since he just played for us and we do have a four million dollar trade exception so we might use that actually is there anybody making less than four million that might be handy dandy to have part of a rotation let's go see i'm sure there is but we'll see what's out there so four million dollars john wall's free agent we got to find someone's actually under contract so first guy under contract is mr nick batum 32 years old 77 overall i think he's perfect i think nicholas batum would be like the perfect guy to try to trade for right now we also have reggie bullock uh wayne ellington yeah we're gonna go ahead and land nicholas batum if it allows if uh, if we can so we're going to use that exception so we're going to use that for our exception and we're going to trade as many seconds as we possibly can for batum they want cj miles in a first and they'll give me a first round pick so top five protected uh top three protected so we're trading a top three protected ne in next year's draft i think and then okay sure why not um let yeah i guess this is fine we'll do it i mean do I, do I, I mean, I would love to not do it, to be honest. Let's see if we could just keep this down to some second round picks and I will throw you another second. Three seconds for Batum. Four seconds, please. No. Wow. They say no to that. So I guess we have to do the offer they offered. Whatever. We'll do it. So I don't think we'll be very bad next year anyway. So we have Nicholas Batum as a good backup three, which I like. So Batum, great addition, in my opinion. And then we're kind of banking on Clark and Stewart to develop, which is hopefully going to happen. Let's see what player progression is looking like for that. So player progression is going to look something like this. So, uh, Mikhail Bridges up to an 81. Perfect. I wanted him to develop like crazy, and he's doing it. Luke is already up to an 89. Zion, 85. Miles Turner, 84. Mikhail Bridges. Marcus Smart is down, and then Clark is up to a 76, which I think is good enough for me. So, Larry Nance, obviously, would be fine at the back of five. We need him to be. Uh, but other than that, I think we're ready to go into season number three. I think there's a very, very good ch uh, chance at going out there and winning a championship next year. So, Let's go ahead because I'm confident. I'm going to auto generate these rookies. I think this team is going to be good enough because we got the scoring and I feel like we have two really good role players for this roster who just like fit the role perfectly. So obviously Mikel Bridges and Miles Turner, they're going to be like the defenders of the roster while these three guys go score, which is great. Then Melton Smart obviously has, you know, some other guys and then Clark can come in when he needs, uh, when his number is called. So yeah, I think we're in a good spot. I'll go ahead and see you guys at the end of year three. Hopefully get a first seed in the West this year. We'll see how it goes. James Harden is a madman. He cannot be stopped. He wins MVP for a third time in a row. Lamella ball in a Charlotte uniform. So he still ends up on the Hornets. That's cool. So bonus six man, quite defensive player. Shea, most approved on the Clippers. And Damon Stoudemire for the Rockets is your coach of the year. And Jameson is your executive. So 
the Rockets are the biggest problem. Uh, Luca is making all NBA second teams already, which is great. And yeah, so the Rockets are going to be our biggest issue. Thankfully, we don't have to run in, run into them into the conference finals. But unfortunately for us, we do have the worst to deal with, which they have Donovan Mitchell and a prime Draymond. They did lose Clay though, so I don't know. We'll see how that goes. But player stat, if we get there anyway. So uh, wow, Melton is out for two to four weeks in Miles Turner's day to day, so he should be back. But 24 from Devin Booker, 26 from Luca, and then 27 from Zion. So uh, Luca is averaging a triple double. But we get the Lakers in round one. So let's see what they're looking like. They have uh, Alonzo Ball, KCP, LeBron, Jay Crowder, Nate Brown, Brandon Ingram, Sean Livingston, Wayne Selden Jr., Grant Williams, Carson Edwards, uh, Malik Fitz. I almost, for some reason, if you know football, I almost said Kyle Pitts. I don't know why. Don't ask. I mean, it's because Kyle Guy, maybe. Maybe I saw Kyle and then it's and thought, hey, Kyle Pitts is here. But hopefully we beat them. Somebody current round and we are going to sweep them. We take care of business and we get to deal with the worst. Now... We get like a prime Stephen Curry, which is going to be pretty tough. But did they get an injury? Uh, no, they just have a starting 71 overall uh, small forward, Leandro Barmero. So cool. Did we get an injury though? Uh, no, it looks like we're pretty healthy, I believe. Unless no, uh, De'Anthony Melton's injured. That's right. We knew that though. He is one or two weeks still away. Okay, so here we go. Game one, one zero. Beat them by two. 36 from Donovan Mitchell. But we had 30 and 28 and then 16, 9 and 13 from Luca, we're up two to zero. So far, so good. And we cannot be stopped. Uh-oh, there we go. There's one. Okay, we beat them in five. Now, are we healthy? We are. Everyone's healthy. So we are ready to try to beat the Rockets who went to seven with the Timberwolves, but then um obviously they swept the Nuggets. So the Nuggets had Johnson, Gary Harris, they had Jokic still. But all right. What is Houston looking like? So they have no more Eric Gordon, but they did get Randall and they still have Chris Paul and Harden. All right. Here goes nothing, man. I feel like our team is ready to take that next step, but you never know. Game one, one to zero, 122 to 96. Chris Paul, James Harden was nowhere to be found in that one. 35, 31, and 16. Game two, they evened it up. Game three, two to one. Uh, three to one. Okay, we're in a good spot. Everyone looks to be healthy as well. Did we get? Nope, we're healthy. And do we beat them in five? No. Do we beat them in six? No, we're going to a game seven. Of course we are. Marcus Smart is injured. Okay, at least it's not like Devin Booker or something. Uh, but here we go. Uh, game seven. Do we shrink this down to an eight-man rotation as well for this game seven? You know what? We're going to. Let's shrink this down to an eight-man rotation for this game seven. Houston, you have a problem, and it's the Suns. Now, can we take them down? Please do not lose this, man. Uh, okay, we take the lead. Can we keep it, though? And it is a very close game. Let's see what happens here down the stretch. We have a five-point lead, and we are going to beat them. Wow, that was close. But we took care of business, and now we run into the 76ers who have Kevin Durant. And they lost Embiid, unless if he's injured, which I assume he is. No, or he is injured. Wow, what a break that we just caught. If he's out for the season, he is out for the season. We got to take advantage. I mean, Ben Simmons is 94, and Kevin Durant is 98. So it's still going to be tough, but... It, this, we got to take advantage of this. We really do. If we can't win here, then I don't know if we win at all in this video. So here goes nothing. Game one, one to zero. Uh, we even it up though. I thought for sure about to get swept. Nope, two to one. All right. Do we got any injuries? Uh, Melton and Marcus Smart both out for the season. So that really, really hurts our depth. Not going to lie. So, but they're still playing through it. All right. Shout out to them. All right, here we go. Game four. We need to win it. Let's see if we can go out here and win game four. Uh, we start out with a really good lead, but they kind of cut it down to four. All right, we win the second quarter. Now, can we keep winning the quarters? And please don't not blow this at the end. All right, we beat them and even it up. All right, game five, big one here. If we could take the three to two lead here, that would put us in a really good spot to potentially hoist up a trophy here in a second. But it's looking like they're going to win it. So game five is going to go to them, which sucks. All right, game six is a big one. Going to rebuild the rotations again. Unfortunately, the injuries are still there. If Embiid, I mean, Embiid should still, I don't know if he's playing for them or not. Uh, he is actually, no, he's still out. Uh, is he playing though? Let's see. He is, in fact, not playing. Okay, so Joel Embiid is not playing for them. All right. Game six. We got to win it, man. It's in Philadelphia. Please come out here and take care of business. Let's do it. Uh, close game. We have the lead though. They took it right back, but we have it. Can we keep it though? Very close game. We have a seven-point lead down the stretch. Do not blow it at the very end, please. Oh, my goodness. Uh, wow. Um, I'm jumping in. I'm jumping in to see if we take care of business here. So, let's see. Do I watch or do I play it as the question? Um, it depends who has the ball. So, I am going to just watch. I'm going to watch. I would rather just watch this. That way, I don't mess anything up. So, camera, 125 to 123. We have the lead right now. Philly has the ball. And they're going to pass it to Ben Simmons. So, Luka is going to be guarding Ben Simmons. Let's see how this is going to go. 
Um, we have Lenny Waters out there in closing time. Love to see it. I don't know how I feel about that. But Ben Simmons is on top of the key. Uh, I mean, if Ben Simmons wants to hit a step back three on us and we lose that way, then whatever. GG's, I guess. But Ben Simmons is... I mean, shoot. If Simmons... I was about to rage quit if he won that game for them. Uh, but we take care of business. I don't know why Philadelphia is drawing up a Ben Simmons play there, but I'll take it. We're moving on to a game seven. So here we go. Game seven in Phoenix. Can we come out here and beat Philadelphia to win this championship? Stop Kevin Durant from winning another one. And it is going to be a relatively close game. We take the lead. Now, can we keep it? Okay, it's 91-91. I think this is another case where we jump in. Watch it. This time, I'll actually hide myself. That way, you guys can see the score. So let's watch this last two minutes and 50 seconds, and let's see how this is going to go. All right, two minutes and 50 seconds left on the clock. As you guys can see, it's 91 to 91. We got Mr. I don't even know who just in. I think that's Deion Waiters. Yeah, it is. So they're going to pass it down to Patty Mills, and they cut to Kevin Durant, who gets a wide open dunk. Miles Turner was kind of there, but that was a nice little first play by them. Not going to lie. So um, let's see what we come out here with. So Luka Doncic, Zion, and then Booker is not out here at the moment. Uh, we have Mark Smart, Miles Turner, and uh, Mikael Bridges. So I like that for defense, but whatever. So let's just see how this goes. I'm going to trust Luka to come out here and win this. Luka for three, and he is going to just splash it. Wow, Luka's a cheat code. What a first play by us, at least since we jumped in. So JJ Reddick's going to bring down the ball. Let's see what they decide to do here. Marcus Smart's giving him plenty of space. Not sure I like that. He's going to pass it to Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons tried to hit a step back, and he's going to take it to the rim, and he's going to miss it. Luka with the rebound. He's going straight um to his, nope he's not he's gonna stop he's gonna hit marcus smart in the corner who is injured smart kind of has an open three but he decides not to take it luca on ben simmons let's see what luca decides to do and he is going to try to take ben simmons and challenge him but ben simmons is going to block him we still only have a one point lead let's see what ben simmons does on this possession he is going to challenge luca and got ben simmons luca Doncic. no passing so far i would give the ball to duran if i'm ben simmons he does Kel Bridges on him. JJ Redick from three. He's going to miss it. That is going to be a rebound from Mr. Um, Doncic. Wow. I don't know why I didn't recognize Doncic at first second. But we're going to get us. It looked like a screen from Zion, but instead we don't. Screen from Miles Turner, though. And Luca's going to hit another step back three here, maybe. And he is. He's going to splash it. Wow. 97 to 93. Luca, you absolute stud. We needed both those shots. And I thank you. So we're at four. We're literally at four right now. So let's go ahead and see. If we can uh, get a stop here and put ourselves in a really good spot. Smart almost gets the steal, but he reaches instead gets fouled. Uh, or he fouls, as you can see. But yeah, first, um, nice little block by Ben Simmons there. Not going to lie. But Luca with the step backs has been pretty nasty with it. So let's see if we can get a stop here. Uh, we, got, we fouled them last time. I'm sure that was a foul to give. All right, let's see what Ben Simmons does. He's going to pass it to Aldridge. Surprise are not going through Durant here more. Mikel Bridges, Durant shoots on Mikel. He's going to miss it. Those arms from Mikel bother Durant. Let's see if Luca's going to hit another step back here. Get a screen from Miles Turner. I love that play so far. Um, he's going to have Mason Plumley on him. I think you challenge Mason Plumley here. Yeah. He, ooh, blocked again. But hey, we get the ba we get the, we get the ball back. So, uh, do we get a substitution? Is Devin Booker coming in the game? He is not. I don't think so. But it's fine. It looks like it's work. Oh no, he's in the game. So Booker is in the game. I think Booker might have been open under the basket, but instead they're going to go to Luca. Ben Simmons has him again. He's going to go to Zion down low. Uh, Miles Turner. Midi for Miles Turner. And he's going to splash this. We have a six-point lead with 49 seconds left. I mean, as long as we don't allow a three here, we should be in the clear, I think. So let's see what Ben Simmons does. Uh, he might be able to get around Luka here. He is going to take it, and he's going to make it. So 95 to 99. Only a four-point lead. So Luka or Ben Simmons cuts the lead to four. Let's see what we decide to do here. We inbound it to Mr. Booker. They still had another foul to give, actually. All right, so... I assume this next foul will be hitting our shooting free throws. So they're going to uh, Zion. Yeah. Okay. He's going to give it to Devin Booker. Uh, they're not. Are they going to foul? No. Luca is wide open right now. Yep. Luca cutting and Plumley almost got there to block it. That would have been pretty disastrous, but thankfully he makes it. So it's a six point lead once again. Ben Simmons is going to have the ball. Uh, unfortunately, I'm so happy Jerome Bede was hurt for them. I'm going I'm to be honest because if Embiid was healthy, I don't know if we win this series. I don't even know if we're in a game seven right now because... That's a pretty nasty squad in Philly if Joel Embiid is healthy right now. Because right now they're starting Plumley, which, yeah, as you guys know, Plumley's great and all. But that would be rough. All right, so Ben Simmons is trying to get the ball. They're going to give it to him. Let's see what he does here. Ben Simmons is going to give it to Plumley. Plumley's going to give it to Redick. Redick's in the paint right now. Not sure what he's doing. He's going to pass it out to Simmons. 
20 seconds left. Nine seconds on the shot clock. He's going to pass. No, Simmons to JJ Redick. JJ Redick is going to miss the three. And that should be your ball game, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's safe to say with the missed three from JJ Redick. I think if Luka hits these two, this game is definitely over. And it probably is over before that anyway. So just like that, Luka Doncic to the Phoenix Suns results in a championship. I mean, it helped. We got Zion to fall to us at pick three. That obviously helped. But let's launch the rest of this. They're going to go to Reggie Bullock. He's going to shoot a three, and he's actually going to hit it. So maybe they put Reggie Bullock in earlier. They win this game. I don't know. But Luka is going to get fouled, and they're just going to play the foul game. I mean, I feel like Luka hits these, and then they're probably not going to hit another three. And that should be your game. Luka hits the first one. It's going to go to a six-point lead, and it could be seven right here. And it, in fact, is going to be a seven-point lead. Let's see if Reggie Bullock has another three in him. Actually, they took him off the floor. So Ben Simmons. See what we're going to do. We're going to go to Aldridge. D3 from LaMarcus Aldridge. It's going to be way off. And just like that, the Phoenix Suns with Luka Doncic, Zion, Booker, Miles Turner, and Mikael Bridges win a championship. Thank you guys for watching. As always, this was a fun little video. Comment down below any other draft night what ifs that you guys have. Per current, uh, preferably in like the last five years because I, I feel like I do a lot of like 2010 videos and I need to start doing some more like, like recent videos if that makes sense. So thank you guys for watching. As always, this is Crushables. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.